Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about crystallization or also uh, as it's known recrystallization. So this is a process through which atoms or molecules uh, wind up arranging themselves in very ordered repeating patterns. There are lots of methods uh, known that can give uh, crystals and a number which could be applicable to any given compound. Typically for organic molecules, uh, the method that we're going to be using uh, the supplies uh, to reducing the solubility of the sample essentially through cooling of the solvent that the solids dissolved in. The solubility of most compounds decreases as temperature is lowered. So the cooling of a saturated solution, if done properly will, and slowly, will often produce crystals. Rapid cooling could cause pre precipitation of an amorphous solid, which is what we don't want. That's not so. Uh, to carry out a recrystallization, you want to dissolve your compound in a minimum amount of hot solvent. If insoluble impurities are present, the hot solution is filtered. If the solution is contaminated with colored impurities, it may be treated with decolorizing charcoal and filtered. The hot saturated solution is allowed to cool very slowly so that the desired compound crystallizes at a moderate rate. When the crystals are fully formed, they're isolated from the mother liquor or the solution that they came from by filtration. Crystallization is the, very, is the relatively slow formation of a crystalline solid as opposed to precipitation, uh, which is simply any rapid formation of uh, an amorphous or disordered solid. If a hot saturated solution is cooled too quickly, the compound could precipitate instead of crystallizing. And a uh, precipitated solute uh, can contain impurities that are trapped in the rapidly formed amorphous mass by entrainment. On the other hand, when a solution is allowed to crystallize slowly, impurities are excluded, typically excluded from the growing crystal structure because the molecules in the crystal lattice are in equilibrium with the molecules in solution. Molecules unsuitable for the crystal lattice are likely to remain in solution and only the most suitable molecules are retained in the crystal structure. Because impurities are usually present at very low concentration, relatively low concentration, uh, they remain in solution even when the solution cools. So to understand why a slow and careful crystallization is preferable, is preferable to a rapid precipitation, let's consider the mechanism of crystal. A saturated solution contains a maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a given solvent at a specific temperature. An unsaturated solution contains less solute than the solvent has the capacity to dissolve at a specific temperature. And a supersaturated solution contains more solute than is present in a saturated solution at a specific temperature. And here's a crystal added of sodium acetate to a, a a supersaturated solution that affords very nice, uh, beautiful crystal growth. So crystallization occurs in stages. As the hot saturated solution cools, it becomes supersaturated. Then crystal nuclei form. These nuclei often form on the walls of a container or at the liquid surface or on a foreign body, uh, such as a particle, because there's a greater probability of proper molecular association at these locations. Once the crystal nuclei have been formed, additional molecules migrate to their surfaces by diffusion and join the crystal lattice. Because the molecules must migrate from the bulk of the solution to the growing crystal surface, the solution surrounding the crystal becomes less concentrated than the bulk of the solution. Also, crystal growth is usually exothermic, so the heat released from the growing crystal increases the solubility of the compound near the surface. For crystallization to continue, the concentration of solute at the crystal site must be increased and the heat must be dissipated. These processes occur by diffusion and take time, so premature chilling or agitation can increase the rate of crystal growth to the point at which a precipitate or unwanted amorphous solid forms. The purest crystals are obtained when crystallization occurs slowly from an undisturbed solution. The first step in doing a crystallization is to choose the right solvent. And what you want uh, is a solvent that dissolves your solid only when it's very hot. So you don't want your solid to dissolve, or your desired solid to dissolve when the 
solvent is at room temperature. If you do have some impurities that don't dissolve at room temperature, again, that's fine. You can just filter them off before you do the crystallization. So uh, it's also ideal if there are different solubilities for the compound uh, that you're purifying and the impurities. Uh, you should Your solvent should have a lower boiling point than the melting point of the compound and should have a fairly low boiling point. It should be an expensive, non-toxic, and non-reactive. Uh, but the main thing is that you want to dissolve your solid in the minimal amount of solvent when the solvent is hot. And you don't want it to dissolve in the solvent when it is at room temperature. Uh, so there are lots of different solvent systems, and essentially um, it's often trial and error as to the best one, but you all know uh, the principles of like dissolves like. Uh, often we have to use co-solvents. To, to view a nice demo of a typical procedure, similar but different, but similar in principle to the one that we'll be using, uh, click on the following link. Thanks and have a, a great time in lab doing your recrystallization.